Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today uh, with the topic carry look ahead adder. Alright. The name is carry look ahead adder. Now what does this mean? Carry look ahead adder also called in short a CLA adder. Alright. CLA. So you know what a carry is, what an adder is. The term that <clears throat> might sound confusing is the look ahead. So we see why this is called a look ahead adder. All right, this is basically an adder. Over here I have the truth table uh, for three inputs. And this is the carry. We need to deal with the carry, so therefore I have not written down the sum. And this, you know what it is, okay? This is a four-bit parallel adder, okay? Using full adders. I hope this is visible. If it's not, so you know how to make it and how it is obtained. All right. So the C input for the first case, it could be a zero. Now for the second half adder, what is the input? The C input. The carry input is what? It's the carry output from C zero, C not. Okay. So this works as a carry input. Now over here we have a C one. Over here we have a C two. That's acting to the as a carry input to this a third and finally we have a c3 which is part of the sum all right so uh, so first we need to understand the term propagation delay propagation delay okay so i won't be writing it down as we don't need to write it down all right if you need to write it down i'm i'm, I'm dictating it slowly so you can write it again okay? so propagation delay is the time taken by the logic gates to perform an operation. All right. What is propagation delay? It is the time taken by logic gates to process the given inputs and given output. All right. This is what this is the propagation delay. All right. So now over here, over here in the in the adders. We have a logic gate which will process the inputs and give us two outputs, sum and carry, all right? Sum and carry, and, and we know, and now we t let me tell you that the propagation delay of, of sum and carry is different. It's different, all right? It's not the same, which means the carry can take a lot longer time or the some can take a longer time uh, to to give us a result all right <coughs> sorry so but what are we interested in we are interested in the propagation delay of this carry and why is that so because because the sum the inputs are given it gives us the sum directly all right we don't need to do anything else with the sum but with the carry we need to feed it as a third input to the next adder like c naught this is feed as an input to the second full adder so s naught is given the sum we don't have to do anything with it but c naught is given to then the next adder c1 is then given to the next adder c2 then given to the next adder and finally c3 the sum so s3 s2 s1 has nothing to do all right so therefore we are interested in the in the what in the propagation delay of carry all right now in this carry look ahead error what do we do what do we do we uh, we predict we predict the carry before it is generated all right now this look ahead look ahead so what does this mean you have to know it from before and that's the basic concept of this carry look ahead then we do what we pre we know it from before it is generated and how is that so I'll be telling you okay you don't need to 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 mind that okay all right so have a look we know from the expression, from the expression of this uh, uh, half for the full error, 
we have uh, the carry output. The carry output is what? It's A and it with B plus uh, or C in and it with an A XOR B. All right. Now have a look for the for, for the or uh, may I write it in colors? Yes. Let me write it in some different color so that uh, or let it be like that. So have a look. Have a look in the last two. In the last two cases, if you see, <clears throat> so it's an A and it with B. A and it with B. A and it with B. C doesn't matter. It's a zero. Still, it's a one. It's a one. Still, the answer is a one. So in this case, we have an A and it with a B, which is this one. All right. Now in the next case, we have what? If you see, so let's say in these four, in these four, we have with A and B, we have the old ones detector. Have a look, it's the old ones detector. All right, and then it, it, it's added up with C also. It depends on the C input as well. First, have a look, it, it's given the old ones detector, it's A, X, or B. And then have a look. It, it's both a zero and both a one for both the different cases. All right, so which means it also now depends on the C input. All right, so this is now the second case in which we have a dependency on the C input. Now this green part, this is called the carry, uh, this is called the carry generator. This is called the carry generator. All right. And the black part, this second part, this A XOR B basically, this A XOR B basically, the second term, this is called a carry propagator. Now why is it called a propagator? Because it depends on the given carry input. All right. Now this generator, this is represented by a G, so I can say C output is a G plus the carry input and the, and the propagator is represented by a P. Alright, so this is the general. Now if you want to generalize it, if you want to generalize it, so what do you do? For C output, C input, what are C output and C input? So for the, for the C output, we have the previous C input, which means for this C naught, the previous was, uh, or this was a minus one, the C input, or, or, or let that go, let over here. We have a C1, which is the output, for which we needed the previous carry, which was a C naught. So for C1, we needed a C naught. Now for C2, we need a C1. For C3, we need a C2. So which means for C, for CI, any general CI, we need a C input, a CI minus 1. Alright, so I can write this as what? As a CI is equal to GI for the same case. We have a GI plus P times CI minus 1. Now this is the generalized form. Now from this we obtain the, uh, uh, the equations for C1, C2, C3. Alright? Okay, so, so we write the final equation, let's say this over here, we have a CI is equal to GI plus P times CI minus 1. All right, now have a look. If, if we put an I equal to 0, if we put an I equal to 0, so what do we have? We have a C uh, naught is equal to... Uh, G naught plus P times C a negative 1. Okay, this is the value now for C naught, okay? Uh, if you put an I equal to 1, so now you have what? You have a C1 is equal to G1 plus uh, P C naught. Now this is in C naught. So again, you have to calculate C0 for it, but if you replace this C0 by this equation, which means you only do what? You only deal with the first carry input. 
Okay, so we then we have to, uh, to do then we do not need to calculate the others. For example, in this case, I put this equation in this one over here. All right, I put the value of c naught. So now, what does this c one become? <clears throat> now it is a g one plus p times uh, g naught plus p times c negative one. Okay, so this is a P1, this is a P0, okay? If we want to open the bracket, you can. So C1 would now be equal to what? It would be equal to G1 plus P1 G0 plus P1 P0 C negative 1. Alright, so this is now the equation for, for the carry C1. And it's again in terms of what? It's again in terms of C negative 1. Now if you put I is equal to 2 over here. So we have a C2 is equal to uh, G2 plus P2 C1. Now we don't need to calculate the carry C1 again. So if you put this value from here in here. So you do what? You go again into the C1 carry. Okay, so, so C2 would now equal G2 plus P2, uh, and in case of C1, we have a G1 plus P1 G0 plus P1 P0 and a C negative 1. So now finally, this C2 becomes what? It becomes a G2 plus P2 G1 plus P1 P2 G0 and plus P0 p1 p2 c negative 1 so again i have a lot this has came in a c negative 1 format you put i is equal to 3 so you have a c3 equal to uh, g3 plus p3 c2 now again to get rid of this c2 you do what you bring it into the c negative 1 form and which is like this if you put the value of c2 in here so now you have a c3 equal to g3 plus p3 c2 and multiplied with a g2 this would be longer plus p2 g1 plus p1 p2 g0 and plus p0 p1 p2 c negative 1 and finally, this C3 would be equal to G3 plus P3 C2 G2. Okay, plus P2 P3 G1 C2. This is not C2. Wrong. Okay. Cut this C2, okay? We, we're using the value of C2 over here, okay? So we don't have this. So we have what G3 plus P3 G2. Then we have a P2 P3 G1. Then we have a P1 P2 uh, P3 G0. And then you have a P0 P1 P2 P3 C negative 1. So now again. Now all the carries C0, uh, C1, C2, and C3, they have become what? In the one carry format, that is they all now depend on this C negative 1, all right? Now have a look over here. This is a C negative 1 uh, in C3. In C2, we have a C negative 1. In, C, uh, in C1, we have a C negative 1. And in C0, we have a C negative 1. All right? Okay, now if you want to make a, a, a logic diagram, let's say. So, let's say over here I have this logic diagram. This is basically what? This is the CLA logic, let's say. So, we have inputs to it in the form of P's and G's, all right? So, let's say we have a P3. We have a G3, 
P2, G2, P1, P0, uh, sorry, P1, uh, G1, and then P0, G0, okay? Now, from you, for P, you know what is the P. So, uh, P, P is what? It's A XOR with B. Now, let's say we have a 4-bit number, and the 4-bit number is what? Let's say A, it is equal to A3, A2, A1, A0, and this B equals B3, B2, B1, and B0. So, now we're here. This P3 would be what? P is A, X, or B. So, P3 would be equal to uh, uh, A3, X, or B3. Alright, this is A3, X, or B3. I hope it's big enough that you can see. Or you're hearing me, okay? <laughs> G3 is what? It's A3 and it's B3. Because G is the and operation. P2 is A2, X, or B2. And G2 is A2 and B2. Now P1, it's A1, X or B1. And G1 is A1 and B1. Now P0 is A0, X or B0. And G0 is A0 and it with B0. Is that clear? Okay, now how do we get the sum and the carry finally from it? So, you know, we will now, uh, this uh, we have over here. Uh, we have four four gates further, so let's say this is the first OR gate. This is the second OR gate. This is the third OR gate, and this is the fourth OR gate. Now, what are the inputs to these four gates? So we have a C negative one over here. Also, we have a C negative one, which is now provided to this. And we have a P0, all right? Then to this gate, we have a P1 and a C0. To this gate, we have a P2 and a C1. And here we have a P3 and C2. And finally, the C3 is over here. Now, this represents the S3. This represents S2 over here, S1. And finally, here we have S0. Inside the CLA logic, we have all these AND gates and we have OR gates to, to come up with C3, C2, C1 and these P's. And finally, when you OR them up in this way, so you have the sum and the carry over the top is there, say C3. All right. So that was all about the basic idea of the carry look ahead error in which we did what? We only used a C negative 1 to predict C2, C3, C1, and C0. All right. This was a little longer video, but I hope you find it interesting and I hope you have understood this carry look ahead at its concept. Don't get bored with this longer video. All right. So that's all for today. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.